his principles. On the front lines in Chechnya, Pelton had met an extraordinary individual named Akil. So now, where did you pick up your toy? An all-American boy raised in San Diego. Akil had converted to Islam and become a member of the Muslim Mujahideen, holy warriors fighting on the side of the Islamic rebels against the Russians. When I left Chechnya, I was told Akil had died in combat. When I returned to America, I was surprised to learn that he was still alive and that he had drifted back into the shadows. Hey, Akil. How you doing? Yeah, I'm on my way to uh, Phoenix. I'll be there in a couple hours. So uh, I'll meet you at the place we talked about, and I'll be driving a white uh, Land Rover. All right, check out later. Bye. At first reluctant to appear on camera, Akil finally allows Pelton to interview him. Pelton secretly meets up with Akil at a prearranged rendezvous point. Hey, Akil. No, I haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. So, can I go visit a friend of yours? Sure. Akil had lost a leg to a Russian landmine, but it didn't slow him down. Like a modern-day gunslinger, he was still ready to fight and die for his code of honor. Akil invites Pelton to enter his private world. Now this, see, I like this. He takes Pelton to a favorite gun store to inspect the lethal tools of the trade. So now, what, what is the, this gun designed for? This, this is a standard setup. The Muslim holy warrior escorts Pelton to a makeshift shooting range on the desert. It's here that he sharpens his marksmanship with his assault weapons, preparing for an uncertain future. When they penetrate, they penetrate bigger, better than bigger rounds. So what's the difference between shooting, like now you're shooting a static object, versus shooting at people? People move. People don't sit still. Akil gives the first direct reports of clandestine training camps in Afghanistan, where few outsiders have ever set foot. Camps rumored to be near those run by America's most wanted terrorist, Osama bin Laden. People always say Osama bin Laden runs camps. Is that true? No, I never even saw him there. But, I mean, did he run camps in Afghanistan? Yeah, he has some training camps, mostly for Arab, Arab uh, Mujahideen. Why did America launch cruise missiles and bomb these camps that you're in? I've wondered that myself because uh, half of the missiles that were launched to Afghanistan landed in the camp that I was training in. And these people previously didn't have a problem with America. But naturally, after the missiles landed and killed some of their people, they declared war against America. So uh, would you be an example of a terrorist, somebody who was trained in a camp in Afghanistan, somebody who fought in Bosnia, somebody who was trained basically to go against any government who threatened Islam, would you be considered a terrorist by our government? I, I would say they probably think I'm a terrorist, yeah. But mm -hmm. I look to terrorism, uh, the, the definition in the dictionary. It's a person using violence against civilians to achieve a goal, whatever the, the mm -hmm. definition is. So by definition, people like Russia, they're, they're terrorists. Mm -hmm. By definition, people like me are uh, doing the job the FBI is supposed to be doing, defending human lives. The West still has lone warriors like Akil, each with his own strict code of honor. And every one of them is armed. I had met a modern-day gunfighter, a man seeking simple justice from the barrel of an AK, instead of a six-year, a loner on the loose in an ever more complicated and violent world. He was living proof that the wild spirit of the West never died, where wide open spaces are still a refuge for gunslingers and outlaws. Here, caught between our love of freedom 
and our passion for violence in the land of the free the home of the brave is still a very dangerous place